What the f***? Greetings ladies and gentlemen, this is Gustophilus and today's sponsors for the video are my own nerves and their extreme tension. As we are going to talk about how my overall Linux experience has been on both Nvidia's 3080 and AMD's RX 6900 XT. In today's video, I shall cover some benchmarks, which are not very scientific in nature, but mostly will concentrate on the overall experience that I've had with the aforementioned GPUs, the pros, cons, pet peeves, and everything in between for my semi-content creation and gaming workflows. Needless to say, this video is going to be extremely subjective in nature, so if you find something that I say which makes no sense to you, or you disagree with the statements made, then that's perfectly okay. We all have our different points of view and do let me know in the comments below how exactly do you feel about all this. But without any further ado, let's begin with some arbitrary benchmark numbers. For the benchmarks, I have obviously avoided any sort of ray tracing or DLSS measurements and will be testing both Proton slash Wine and native ports. Though I find differentiating them pretty much pointless unless you directly compare native to Wine slash Proton. The selection of games is not huge as I tend not to play every popular game under the sun, so they are what they are. All the testing is done in 4K resolution with no modifications to the driver settings and only Mango Hut is enabled for on screen performance monitoring. In addition to that, a majority of games don't have a built in benchmark available, so I shall be a bit creative with the measurements and hope that you take the results with a grain of salt. The measurements are all taken using Mango Hut's built in logging capabilities, where for the games, which do have a built-in benchmark, I have captured the data from the initial stabilization point until the end and for the games that do not have a built-in benchmark, I have captured one minute of gameplay data for the comparisons. Another thing to note here is that the 3080 and the 6900 XT are not meant to be directly comparable. The 6900 XT clearly has more raw oomph and these results are only here to give you a rough idea of what you might expect should you have or decide to buy one of these GPUs for 4K gaming on Linux. The driver version for the NVIDIA proprietary blob tested is 470.74 and the version of Mesa for the 6900 XT is 21.2.3. Now that we have the methodology and stats out of the way, let's get benching. Next, let's discuss the overall desktop usage experience. I am someone who cannot wait for the Wayland to finally be ready for production, and in some regards it already is. Whilst using an AMD GPU with Mesa drivers, Wayland is actually very usable and I struggle to find any real issues with it. There are certainly a lot of features which are still missing from Wayland, for an example creating a custom resolution or performing any real gameplay recordings, but for general PC use it works like a charm. The performance in gaming is fairly good under Wayland, but if you're someone who wants all the blame that the Linux desktop has to offer, the good old X server is pretty much still the way to go. Whilst using an NVIDIA GPU though, Wayland is kind of halfway supported according to reports online. And as with the proprietary drivers, I haven't been able to get it working properly myself just yet. 
Maybe it's just me and my current setup, but it is definitely not as straightforward as it is with an AMD GPU. When we talk about using X server though, and that in the fact that I'm using an LG C1 48 inch OLED display over HDMI 2.1 as my main display, things get interesting. Namely, on an NVIDIA GPU, using the proprietary drivers, NVIDIA offers their GPU control center software through NVIDIA settings application. AMD, on the other hand, does not have any real control center implemented under Linux ever since Catalyst died off. And this is very annoying, as simple changes to the way that your GPU behaves are either impossible or require you to take a deep dive into the documentation. Two good examples for this are anisotropic filtering and color output settings. Using NVIDIA Control Center, you can easily force the anisotropic filtering settings globally and change the color space of your display. On AMD though, anisotropic filtering can be forced via a command line parameter to the game, which is excellent, but the color space of the display cannot be properly set. Rather, the GPU reads the edit data sent by the display and automatically takes that as the source of truth. And there is a problem with that. A huge problem. Namely, AMD drivers on Linux do not yet have HDMI 2.1 specification implemented as of making of this video. And quite possibly, they never will. Or at least until HDMI forum allows to release their source code. Or AMD finally goes down the hybrid path of closing up a portion of their drivers for such occasions. And this means that the proper HDMI 2.1 handshake will fail. And the best case scenario that your display can deliver to you is 4K at 120Hz at 420 chroma sump sampling. Whomever has seen what that looks like knows that it is a pretty awful issue. You can lower the refresh rate of your display to 60Hz in order to get the full 444 chroma, but then you are left with a laggy desktop experience. In addition to that, forget about FreeSync, as that is an HDMI 2.1 feature. Yes. I know about the Radeon Pro drivers, but the point remains as those lack the HDMI 2.1 features as well. When we jump over to our NVIDIA setup though, HDMI 2.1 is better supported under Linux and using the NVIDIA settings app, we can set the correct full RGB Chroma 444 mode whilst using the display at 120Hz. We don't get the full 10-bit color output and adaptive sync, although recognized, it's not currently working. The adaptive sync has been added, but it seems to be a bug with the current drivers I've been using. Future me here, hi, yes. Just wanted to address the adaptive sync issue with the drivers I was using. Indeed, it was a bug and it has been fixed now. So, and video drivers are good to go. A thing to note here is that I did not touch HDR or Dolby Vision topics, as I don't use them with my PC under Linux and usually I just stream HDR content from NAS directly to the TV. Something really nice on NVIDIA and is also the existence of Green with Envy application, which allows you to monitor your GPU, set up fan curves and do some overclocking. Personally, I am not into overclocking, but I am definitely interested in seeing some more delicious data bits regarding the hardware I'm running. And that custom fan curve option with the possibility to undervolt the GPU really helped me out back when I had the 2080 Ti, which had some awkward fan issues. And all that comes in a very nicely packaged GUI. What I'm trying to say here is that it is simply delicious. Ooh. So, when it comes to AMD though, there is Core Control, which aims to provide a similar look and feel to AMD drivers on Windows. Similar to Green with Envy, you can overclock, undervolt, set custom fan curves and monitor the GPU with the application. If it works, it's great and you can even set different profiles for different applications for your workflows. Though I have had issues with the app recognizing valid monitoring data in the past, as of this recording, I'm glad to see that the issues seem to have been cleared up and the 6900 XT is properly recognized with all the application features working great. And now let's move over to OBS, screen capturing and the encoder gripes. <laughs> You probably already know where this is going, but as we're here and for completion's sake, I will be bitching and moaning about this till the cows come home. When you're using an NVIDIA GPU and you decide that it's time to record some gameplay, it's pretty straightforward. You set up OBS, have it use the NVENC encoder and reap the rewards. Doesn't matter whether you're doing 1080p, 1440p or lighter 4K recordings, NVENC is your way forward. 
The GPU encoding performance is good, but unfortunately not really comparable to what it is under Windows. Although you can record 4K using NVENC, if you start really pushing the render quality up, the output video can start having seizures and you should definitely do a lot of testing on your own rig to get the optimal settings dialed in if you're trying to go for the 4K GPU encoded recordings. The positive side of all this is that you can actually do it and all things considered, Nvidia's hardware encoder is still the best option available under Linux for anyone looking to grab some delicious gameplay footage without having to set up a capture card or a dedicated recording rig. But now we arrive at the grim reality which is hardware based encoding on AMD GPUs under Linux. Ooh. What can I say? I mean, on paper, it does exist. Too bad that in reality is pretty much as real as unicorns are. I mean, there are a few options to utilize the hardware encoder, but they are pretty much the same as slapping a dildo on a horse's forehead and calling it a unicorn. <laughs> So regular OBS with FFmpeg to access your GPU's encoder doesn't work or is buggy beyond comprehension depending on your settings. Then there is OBS StreamFX and the amazing Advanced Media Framework or AMF Pro Driver which you can activate through Vulkan Environment Variable Manipulation. Also, haven't gotten it to work properly. You could try the Pro Drivers directly with OBS, but the chances are that it simply just won't work. This doesn't work, that doesn't work, nothing really works, and it sucks. <coughs> the only way that I've found to get GPU encoding working on Linux using an AMD GPU is listed in this article by Unix Maniac. I shall leave it in the description box below so that you too could theoretically benefit from it. Why theoretically? Because there is a downside to this and not everyone is willing to use this method for recording. Namely, you cannot record audio and video at the same time in a same file. This means that you will have to make a script which starts both the audio and video recordings and, if needed, stitches them together later when you finish with the recording. Luckily, Unix Maniac has also provided his example scripts to get you going and I personally really appreciate his work. A big thanks to you. But that's pretty much the gist of it. I guess for around 95% of Linux gamers who wish to record their gameplay, there is still the good old CPU encoding when using an AMD GPU. But having a good reliable experience whilst recording 4K footage, oh, that's another topic altogether. There are a lot of topics which need to be covered in regards to using Linux as your daily driver for anyone looking to come down this rabbit hole and this AMD vs Nvidia personal experience video is but a tip of an enormous iceberg. In regards to overall gaming performance, AMD's drivers have come a long way on Linux and I would even go as far as to say that it no longer matters whether you have an AMD or an Nvidia GPU for gaming. They both provide an excellent overall experience and the performance versus Windows is no longer an issue for either of them. When we take the general OS use case scenario of simply using the computer for browsing, light gaming and work, then I would strongly consider AMD to be the better option of the two due to ease of setup, flawless kernel integration, stability and support for the all cool things open source like Wayland Display Manager for an example. Given the current market situation, you can also get the 6900 XT for the price of a 3080 with more performance under its belt. Depending on of course where you buy the cards and what kind of deals you can get. Alas, should you have an itch for hardware accelerated video encoding or really anything which could benefit from CUDA, the name this offering simply falls apart and Nvidia is the only realistic choice that you have. Furthermore, should you be an avid user of HDMI 2.1 for the display output with something like LG CX or C10 TVs, then again, Nvidia would be the only reasonable choice for you due to AMD's drivers being all open source and having conflicts with HDMI Forum's HDMI 2.1 implementation. In any case, 
it's time for me to wrap things up and please do let me know in the comments below what are your thoughts on the benefits of going with AMD versus Nvidia on Linux. As said, there are a lot of things to talk about regarding this topic and I think I'll start making more technical guides slash videos on the matter in the future. But until that time comes, I would like to wish you all the best and may you have a lovely rest of your day. Whenever, wherever you are. Bye-bye. Whoa! <laughs>